Hi everyone, Seth from Sailrite Corporation, manufacturers of the Packrite bearing and high performance mechanical packing here today for the Pump Seal channel to go over how to install and remove packing in a pump. It's a very simple concept. I've seen it done many, many different ways. This is just the way that I'm going to show you that it's a simple way. Again, there's other techniques and tricks that you can use uh, to install packing but there's a few things that you should be aware of and it's kind of a, a standard practice and knowledge. So what I'm gonna to use today, there's several different tools here on the table uh, to properly install and remove the packing. Uh, starting from my right here, this is the lantern ring, don't worry about that. Um, this here is just a pusher tool here. This is a setting tool, all three of these tamping and setting tools. The old Bruno's pick, and these are our extractors right here. So I'm just going to use these tools today uh, to install the packing. Obviously, as you can see, there's several different sizes to these. You just got to make sure before you do your installation or removal that you have the appropriate size piece of equipment for what you're going to be working on. All right, so on to the mechanical packing. Here's my packing set. As you can see, I have two different types of packing in here. Um, I did cover it in an earlier video um, that sometimes you do need to use different types of packing based on the position of the pump because whether you're going from process out or, or atmosphere in, um, each position is going to see different criteria. It may see different thermal qualities, different mechanical properties, may see different chemical concentrations based on how close it is to the flush or atmosphere to process. What that requires sometimes is mixing your packings inside of that stuff and box based on where it's going to be in the position so that you have the optimal packing in that particular position for the process that you're going to be pumping. All right, so without further ado, that's the pump I'm going to be using right there, the old Gould's 3196 MT. Best thing to do, start off, is measure inside the pump. If you've never worked on this before, you've never worked on this particular piece of equipment, highly, highly suggested that you get your box depth, your box bore, your shaft sleeve, and the position of the lantern ring. If it's something that you've worked on time and time again, should be noted somewhere what your packing arrangement is going to be. What I mean by that is how many rings of packing from process to the flush ring, and then from the flush ring out to atmosphere. And most of the time, if you look inside uh, a manual, it'll have a code, it'll be like 3L3, 2L3, 4L2. What that goes, what that means is from process out to atmosphere. So 2L3 means it's two rings of packing, L for lantern ring, and then three rings of packing out to atmosphere, just so that there's no confusion. So I've worked on this pump before, no need for me to measure it. Measure it. I already know what I'm going to be using for my packing. So to start off, I am going to remove my packing from, if I can get it, from the packaging. Good job packaging here. It is okay for most applications. Again, check with, uh, check with your planner, check with operations to use lubrication in order to get that packing ring in there. Sometimes they can be a little bit oversized, and then when you start manipulating them, it releases the fibers and, and expands them and can make it difficult to install the packing into the pump. All right, WD-40 works. I'm a Croil man myself. Um, if either Croil or WD-40 wants to, to pay me for what I just said, I'd be happy to accept their money. So all I'm gonna do is give the shaft sleeve a quick shot. I'm gonna give the OD of my packing ring a quick shot. And here, now I have my first packing ring set. I'm going to pull it in, and I'm going to do what's called a helix here. Now, as you're installing the packing, as you can see, I have one of the cuts that is sloping away from the stuffing box and one towards the stuffing box. Always want to do the one that's away first and seat that in. You never want to reverse it and seat the one pointing towards the stuffing box in first. Why? Because when you close it, Inside the stuffing box, now all of a sudden, you have a little step there. So from here, I'm going to start my packing ring. 
here and I'm going to follow it around. Now a little trick to the trade here if you can see. If I'm having a hard time getting my packing in, I'm actually just going to take this free end and bend it back a little bit. That'll drop that top edge right in. Boom. Once I have it flush, now here's where the controversy begins. A lot of people will take the gland follower and then set that next packing ring in. They'll, they'll push it as far as the gland follower can go, and then they'll take the next packing ring, put it behind it, and keep going on all the way through until all of the packing is in. I highly suggest not doing that. You have no guarantee that that first packing ring or subsequent packing rings are mated to each other or at the bottom of the box, which is why I have all these special tools here. These pumps are designed to have positive surface contact with the bore, somewhat with the shaft, but certainly with each other, with each subsequent packing ring. It is meant to be compressed together. You're going to get the optimal performance out of your pump and your packing when you make sure that every single ring is firmly seated. So I'm not saying that using the gland follower is wrong. I'm saying that's only part of what you should be doing if that's how you choose to install the packing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to go about using the packing follower very simply here. So I'm going to bumble this and put my gland follower in like such. Okay, let's see if I'm coordinated enough here. Almost, and we're there. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to actually use the packing follower. And I'm going to push this all the way in until the nose is fully seated. Again, I'm going to bumble this. There we go. That first ring is always a doozy. Okay, I went as far as I could with that gland follower. Again, some people will stop there, put the next ring in, and then use that gland follower again to seat that packing ring. And again, use the subsequent rings to compress it all the way to the bottom. I'm telling you, don't do that. So do that, but then do the next step. You can either take a pusher such as this here. You can wrap it around the shaft like such here these can be a little temperamental then from there I can push that ring a little bit further in I can use the gland follower then behind that as well to push that a little further in problem with that that's not the actual depth of the stuffing box okay so we still don't know if we're all the way in plus once you get this thing past uh, past the bore here it's kind of a pain in the knobs to pull out. You'll have to use your extractor and try to take it out. But it's still a very useful tool. Highly suggest that whoever you are, get some of these. They do help and it makes things a lot more expedient. That's where this fine dandy comes in. So this is my tamping tool. All right. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to make sure that I go in that cut end. I know which where that position is of my cut is. I'm going to go on that cut end that was away from the pump. I go on that first and I push this all the way down. And I bring it all the way around, slowly bringing that packing ring down to the bottom of the box. Until I am fully seated inside of there. From there, I will now repeat this process with all of my other packing rings. All right, pull them out. Boom. Give it a quick shot. Boom. Boom. Now, what I want to do with my next ring now is stagger those joints. You don't ever want to put the joints in the same place. What I mean by that is I had my split at the 12 o'clock position on the pump. I'm going to want to rotate that next joint. You don't ever want to create a leak path, which is what you're ultimately doing. All right, you're creating a leak path, making it easier for processor flush water to get out here to atmosphere. 
So simply by rotating that, I'm sealing that top joint. And then on the next ring, I may go to the six o'clock position. I'm sealing this joint, so on and so forth. There's a lot of controversy as to what is the appropriate position. Is it 90 degrees? Is it 120? Is it 180? You know what? Just make sure you're staggering the joints at minimum 90 degrees. All right, just make it harder for anything to leak out. So from here, I'm gonna give her the little helix. From there, as you can see, now I went 90 degrees. I bring the cut end that is pointing away from the pump in first, like such. And boom, boom, boom. From there, like I said, I can either grab my gland, push it in, use my pusher from there, and then my tamping tool, or you can just go straight for the tamping tool. Bypass everything else. Big thing, start on your cut end first. Ooh. It's almost my knuckles which is very, very common. All right, boom, and she's in. All right, so from there, from there, I'm gonna fill the stuffing box, all right? All the way out, going by what is recommended, the, uh, the 2L3, 3L3, whatever it is, I'm gonna put that packing in there. Okay, so standard industry practice with your gland follower, they say, is, is you want to pilot an eighth of an inch of that nose into the stuffing box. All right, that's the common measure. Eyeball it. You don't have to sit there with micrometers or anything to make sure you have exactly an eighth of an inch in. It's just you don't want, the big thing is you don't want that packing gland outside of the stuffing box. So if your packing goes beyond the point of the stuffing box, stop right there. Pull that last ring out, put your gland in. What can happen sometimes is, especially when it's running and you go to tighten it, the gland follower may split, it may move up and down, and then it'll never actually get piloted into that stuffing box. It's not doing anything on the packing, it's not tightening it, it's not making sure that all those surfaces are mated anymore. This thing becomes something to just make sure that the packing doesn't blow out of there. But other than that, it serves no purpose at that point. So. If you were to err in one direction, make sure that the packing gland is inside that stuffing box before you start. So startup procedures, it varies on the process. It varies on the type of packing. Um, all I can say is don't over tighten it. Do not over tighten it. I'm, I'm sure some of the people watching this video have done this before where they've put too much tension on that gland follower. And what happens? You go to startup, it smokes, it burns. Once you've burned packing, it's pretty much done, okay? It's, it's just there to fill the void. It's not actually doing anything uh, performance-wise to actually keep process out and that seal water flush in your packing. It's cooked. It's done. So what we typically do, and again, it, it varies on process. It varies on the pump. Um, but typically is we'll get our packing in. We'll put the gland follower on. We'll get it finger tight. We'll turn the gland, uh, gland nuts about two flats, let it rest for a little bit, back it off, let it relax, then bring it back hand tight. And then once the pump starts up, uh, then we go in and we do our final adjustments. So everybody has their own way of doing it. I'm just saying don't put a lot of beef to it, all right? Don't torque it down. If anything, if you're going to err in one direction on that, is leave it a little bit more loose. You can take up on it as as you go all right so now we're going to move into the removal process all right packing shot it's done i got to pull the packing out all right tip that's easier said than done this sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not it depends on the condition of the pump the condition of the shaft sleeve uh if you lost flush water and now you have product embedded in there it can be a real job all right but um there's a few tricks to the trade, but ultimately you're going to be using these tools most of the time. And I've seen it done a bunch of different ways with a bunch of different types of tools, but kind of industry standard is you're going to be using a packing extractor right here. 
as you can see I have several different sizes again you just have to choose the size that's appropriate for your stuffing box all right and then sometimes you'll need that good old-fashioned Bruno's pick all right so all I'm gonna do here I selected the proper size puller for my pump I'm gonna create a little tension here just holding on to this t-handle create a little tension I'm gonna angle that puller in from here I'm gonna use the t-handle and I'm, I'm applying pressure in this direction towards process while I'm spinning this hook and you'll feel it bite you'll feel it bite you don't want to sink too far in depending on on what the uh, the diameter or the width of your packing is sometimes you can grab two and it may seem like it's impossible to get out that'll happen so you just want to make sure that you get it in there solid enough but not so far that you're grabbing two sometimes even three rings of packing so from here I'm going to put a little bit of pressure down on my pack and puller now you see I have my t-handle here so it's an action where I'm pulling on the t-handle and I'm applying force this way and what that will do whoo -hoo, look at that it'll pull my extractor out sometimes being persnickety on me All right. there we go got a good bite on that one okay uh, again all right now once I have it out to here if you can tell it's a little bit loose it's coming out pretty easy there's a couple different things you can do um, you can just continue to pull or what I like to do I'm here straight and then I pull it straight out that way cool now one thing that you should do especially if the pump has been having trouble and you're packing it on an emergency basis uh, this thing hasn't lasted as long as uh, you wanted it to because of the packing, because of you know what you're sealing it with. As you pull those rings out, put them down exactly how you took them out. I covered this in another video. These things read like tea leaves, okay? I can sit here and I can tell you within 90% accuracy as we start moving down, and if I see that set, I can give you an idea of what happened to it and why it failed. All right, you may already know, but I'm saying if it's a mystery, all right, put them out in the order, take them out in, in the order that you took them out, put them down. I'm screwing this up. All right, put them down in the order you pulled them out and then look at them. All right, if anybody wants, you can get a hold of us and send us a picture and tell us what your process is and we'll do our best to tell you what happened. All right, so now I'm going to go in and grab the other ring here. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Again, applying pressure, pulling. All right, so this is where I'll just show you the you know, Bruno's pick. I'm going to take my little Bruno's pick here. If I'm having trouble getting this thing out, these things work fantastic. I'm just going to take that tip. I'm going to start prying. You can do this with a screwdriver as well. The Bruno's pick is nice because then I can, I can grab right a hold of this thing push in and I can manipulate it that way too. These are also very, very useful when trying to get stubborn lantern rings out. All right, from here I can use my hand, boom, pull it straight, out it comes, and put it down in the order in which it was installed. And there you have it. From there, obviously, go back through your pump, clean it out, do whatever you have to, do your inspections. Um, if it's just the end of the service life of the pump and you're just packing it because it's time you can go ahead and chuck it do whatever but if you're having trouble i can't express to you enough uh take a look at that packing it'll tell you everything that's going on in there or most of everything that's going on in there so thank you for your time um if you have any questions feel free to contact us uh for those of you who've done this before I'm, I'm sorry this is so redundant and again i know there's a bunch of different ways to do this I'm just giving you one example. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.